Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for joining our virtual public meeting about the State Road 44 at Kepler Road Roundabout. We do still have some folks signing in, so we'll get started shortly. Again, thank you so much for signing into our virtual public meeting. And we're going to give a few minutes to allow folks to sign on. We will get started in just a couple. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Carolyn. I'm one of the public engagement consultants who works with the Department of Transportation. We do want to thank you again for joining us for this virtual public meeting regarding the proposed roundabout at State Road 44 and Kepler Road in Volusia County. While we're getting ready to get started, we did want to walk through just a, a few slides for those of you that might be new to using GoToWebinar. Um, you will notice that you can join GoToWebinar from your um, computer, laptop, or your smartphone. 
if you are joining us from your laptop, if you look in your top right hand corner, there's a little black box with some controls in it. Um, that box, you'll, the first control is a little red arrow. If you click on that arrow, it will expand a larger menu. On the cell phone, those controls are typically at the bottom, though they could be at the top depending on the cell phone that you have. Once you click that arrow to expand your menu, you'll see that you have a few different options. A couple that we wanna point out to you tonight. Um, first is this handouts section. We do have a couple of handouts that we invite you to download. Uh, the first is a comment form that you can download to send us a comment later. We also have a copy of this presentation, the slides and the script that we will be using that you can download for future reference. Another important feature is this question box. This evening, all listen listeners um, will be muted throughout the presentation. Um, we do ask that you provide your comments and questions to us using this question box. Um, you can type that question in, we will be collecting them and all of the questions and comments will be responded to in writing. From your cell phone, the controls here at the bottom, if you hit the question mark, um, you get a box that types up or pops up and you can type your question in there. And you can click on the handouts icon to um, access the handouts for download. Another feature that we'll be having um, through this meeting is we have a couple of quick questions that we want to ask you. Um, these are just simple polls. So the poll will pop up on your screen. Um, and it's just to help us know kind of how a little bit um, about how you heard about the meeting and how much um, how familiar you are with roundabouts. So here's the first one. So go ahead and answer that um, if you would. We'll just give that a couple more minutes or a couple more seconds for folks to fill it in. So thank you very much for that. Oh, we lost our slideshow. Okay. Um, and then right now I'm gonna turn it over um, to Todd who is our Todd Helton is our FDOT project manager, and he's um, going to give you a little bit of information. And then once Todd is finished, we will launch the other poll for you. Todd. All right, thanks, Carolyn. And good evening, everyone. I'm Todd Helton. I'm the FDOT project manager for the State Road 44 and Kepler Road Roundabout Project. I wanna thank everyone for joining us tonight. I know we have a number of interested citizens along with a number of elected officials on with us, so thanks again for joining. Um, also here tonight is Nick Harrison. He's our consultant project manager, as well as other members of our team. So this is the first of two meetings we'll have for this project, a public hearing that'll include an in-person location as planned for early next year. In a moment, we'll begin the presentation about the project. Following the presentation, our team will read comments and questions submitted through the question box and address them as time allows. All comments submitted will receive a written response sent to the email associated with the comment. We also want to remind everyone that a recording of this webinar and the materials presented tonight will be available for viewing on demand at our project webpage at www.cflroads.com. You just type the project number, which is 431922-1 into the search box and click on the project name. We've also provided a PDF of the presentation and script and a comment form in the handout section of your screen. Those can be downloaded during the webinar. I'd like to now turn it over to Susan Clary, our public communications consultant to begin the project presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. The purpose of this meeting is to introduce the design concepts to the community and to provide an opportunity for questions and comments. We will also go over the project schedule. A public hearing for this project will be held at a later date. Thanks, Susan. Before we get 
go any further, I'm going to launch this other poll real quick and give folks a few minutes to answer that. Okay, well, thank you all for participating in that for us. We'll get started with the rest of the presentation in just a moment. Um, just a reminder, if you have any questions for us or having any um, technical issues, please go ahead and type those questions into the question box for us. Susan, it's all yours. Okay. Uh as I said before, the purpose of this meeting is to introduce you to the design concept, concepts for the Kepler Road Roundabout. We want you to know that during this period, you can ask questions and list comments in the box all throughout this meeting, and we'll get to those later. This meeting is being held in accordance with the state and federal regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to the Florida Department of Transportation compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith, the FDOT District 5 Title VI coordinator, by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us or Jacqueline Paramore, FDOT statewide Title VI coordinator by email at jacqueline.paramore at dot.state.fl.us. Now I'd like to turn it over to Nick Harrison, our consultant project manager. Thank you, Susan. This project is located in Volusia County, adjacent to the city of Deland. The project includes replacing the existing traffic signal with a new roundabout at the intersection of State Road 44 and Kepler Road and roadway widening to create a three-lane section to accommodate left turning vehicles along State Road 44 east of Kepler Road. The project limits begin west of Kepler Road and extend east past Hallison Lane. The existing intersection consists of one travel lane in each direction with right and left turn lanes along both State Road 44 and Kepler Road. There are no sidewalks and bicyclists use the paved shoulders and bicycle through lanes at the intersection. There is also new development proposed in three out of the four quadrants of the intersection, including a new gas station to replace the existing Circle K, a new 7-Eleven gas station, and, a, and an animal hospital. These are proposed to be in place prior to construction of the intersection improvements. This intersection experiences a high volume of injury-related crashes and significant traffic backups in the AM and PM peak hours. From the study period between 2011 to 2015, there were 81 total crashes with 33 or 41% resulting in injuries. This includes 22 angle or left turning crashes. Based on traffic volumes from 2017, intersection approach delays range from 48 seconds in the AM peak hour to 141 seconds in the PM peak. This means traffic backups can extend a quarter of a mile at this intersection. The goal of this project is to enhance safety and improve operations at this intersection. These problems will only get worse as traffic volumes continue to increase in this corridor. This map shows the adjacent plan development noted earlier, as well as substantial new residential development proposed in the area. The traffic projections for this project have been updated to account for this future plan development. A roundabout was selected for this intersection to improve safety first and foremost. 
between 2014 to 2018, there were 62 angle or T-bone crashes resulting in at least one fatality at intersections in Volusia County. Roundabouts are a proven countermeasure to reduce these most serious types of accidents at intersections. Roundabouts are not a magic pill to eliminate all accidents, but due to the reduced speeds and traffic patterns of this intersection type, crashes are typically limited to minor fender bender, rear end or side swipe crash types that do not result in serious injury or fatality. From this same period, there were no fatalities at Volusia County intersections from side swipe crashes. At this intersection, it is estimated that the chance of serious injury or fatal crash is reduced by 70% compared to the existing signal. The primary reason for the reduction of serious accidents at this intersection is due to a reduced amount of conflict points or interaction between vehicles. At a tra traditional signalized intersection, as shown on the left-hand side, the white circles identify locations where vehicular paths can cross one another, which can lead to potentially dangerous angle-type crashes. Conversely, for the roundabout schematic shown to the right, the opportunities for vehicles to cross paths at high speeds have been eliminated and replaced with merging conflict points, which limit the severity of a potential crash if one were to occur. As traffic backups are a common occurrence at this intersection today, the roundabout will also, also significantly reduce congestion. The proposed roundabout will, will reduce traffic delays by approximately 52% in the PM rush hour and 80% in the AM in the design year of 2040. The department analyzed a variety of options to enhance safety and relieve congestion at this intersection the alternatives that best improve tra traffic operations in the 2040 design year, including a traffic signal with two through lanes in all directions and two southbound left turn lanes as shown on the left, and a two lane roundabout with right turn bypass lanes as shown on the right. Comparing these two alternatives, the roundabout was selected based on the safety enhancements, comparable reduction in traffic delays, less right-of-way impact, and the overall resulting cost benefit. This is what the proposed roundabout will look like once constructed, looking from northeast to southwest. In addition to the roundabout, improvements include pedestrian and bicycle facilities, landscaping in the center island, and lighting for vehicular traffic as well as pedestrians. Now we'll take a look at the roundabout in action. Starting from the north of the intersection looking south, this video shows the proposed roundabout, as well as the adjacent future development, including the redeveloped Circle K in the foreground, the new 7-Eleven to the near right, and the new animal hospital in the far right across the intersection. The traffic that you see is the actual forecasted traffic volume during the PM rush hour in the 2040 design year. Looking past the intersection east along State Road 44, note the roadway widening for the left turn lane that extends to Talisman Lane. Each approach to the roundabout consists of two lanes in each direction with right turn bypass lanes in three out of the four quadrants. As vehicles approach the roundabout, note how they slow down and yield to oncoming traffic and then proceed when traffic is clear. Additionally, there are sidewalks and crosswalks at all approaches. Pedestrians will activate the Rapid Rectangular Flashing Beacon, or RRFB, prior to crossing. There are also bicycle ramps at each approach to allow cyclists to exit the roadway and utilize the sidewalk if they so choose. To safely navigate the roundabout, it is important to follow the signing and tail marking. Once a driver is in the correct lane, they should not change lanes within the roundabout. To continue straight through, drivers may use either of the two lanes, yield to pedestrians and oncoming traffic, and proceed, as shown here. Left turn maneuvers can only be made from the inside lane. Drivers will perform the same yield operation and then proceed past the oncoming lane and follow the circle to make the left-hand turn, as shown here.
Right turn movements for the State Road 44 and northbound Kepler Road approaches will use right turn bypass lanes. This traffic does not enter the roundabout, but still must yield to oncoming traffic. Bicyclists have two options to navigate the roundabout. The first is to exit the roadway via the bicycle ramp and use the sidewalks and crosswalks to complete their maneuver. The second option is to remain within the roadway and traverse the roundabout in the same fashion as, a motor, as motor vehicle traffic. To safely cross the roundabout, pedestrians should use the sidewalk and marked crosswalks and never enter the center of the roundabout. As mentioned earlier, to alert drivers that a pedestrian is present, the pedestrians will activate a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRB, in a similar fashion to a traditional signalized intersection. Pedestrians should wait and allow for vehicles in both lanes to yield prior to crossing the street. And with that, I'm gonna turn it back, back over to Susan. Thank you. You can find more information online about roundabouts and how to use them at www.fdot.gov and www.safety.fhwa.gov. Tips are also available by typing fdot.tips forward slash roundabout in your browser. We are still in the early design process for this project. Initial plans will be submitted this summer. A public hearing is scheduled for early 2021 with final plans submitted in the summer of 2021. Right of way is needed for this project and a portion of the estimated $6 million cost is funded. Construction is expected to cost about $4 million and is currently not funded. Your feedback is important to us and we encourage you to share your comments using any of the following methods. One, type a question in the question box during the virtual meeting. That's this meeting. And as Carolyn told you, you can type your question at any time in the question box. Two, download a comment form from the handout section of the page during the virtual meeting and return it to the address shown on the form. And that's attached to your box. Three, Contact FDOT project manager, Mr. Todd Helton by email at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us or by telephone at 386-943-5207. And lastly, use the ask a question button on the project page of our CFL Roads website. That website is www.cflroads.com forward slash 431922-1, which is the project number. Comments are welcome throughout this project. Those received by August 21st, 2020 become part of the record for this meeting. And again, all comments and questions will re be responded to by mail. To follow the status of the project, please visit the project page on the FDOT's Central Florida website, www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 431-922-1 in the search box at the top of the page. Then click on Go. When the new page opens, click on the project file name. The recording of this presentation tonight will be posted to the website within a few days. Again, if you have questions or would like information, please contact Todd Helton, the FDOT project manager, or Nick Harrison, the consultant project manager. Thank you very much, Susan. Um, we are going to get started with a question answer period in just a second, but I did want to give you the results of our poll. Um, so it looks like the first question that we asked you about, how did you hear about the meeting? 35% said that they received a letter in the mail. 
20% said they saw the public notice or advertisement, 27% told us word of mouth, and 18% said other. So thank you so much for responding to that. Our second poll question was about how familiar are you with roundabouts? 76% responded, very familiar, 22% said somewhat familiar, and 2% said not familiar, familiar at all. So again, thank you so much for answering our poll questions. That helps us very much. So Todd, um, I will turn it back over to you. Oh, I'm sorry, before I do that, one quick thing. When we leave the webinar, um, attendees will see a short survey. That's another opportunity to provide comment. Um, it will show up in your email and, and on your screen after you sign out. So we do encourage you to answer that as well. Todd? All right, thanks, Carolyn. And, and thanks again, everyone. Um, looks like we have a few questions. Uh, just a reminder, if you have a question, please go ahead and type it in the chat box now. Um, and like we've said several times, um, any comment that you provide either tonight or between now and August 21st will become a part of the public meeting record. But of course, uh, anytime you have a question or a comment about the project, just let me know. Sorry, um, storm's hitting right outside the house. So uh, I guess we'll go ahead with the first question. Uh, yes, we do have a question asking if the presentation that's going to be downloaded, uh, that, that people can download, will it include the animation that we showed? So the, the PDF does not include the animation because it's a PDF, but the recording of this presentation will be a video which will show the animation. Um, and we can also um, if you get in touch with Todd, we can make arrangements if we need to share that animation in another fashion. Okay, we've also got a question about um, is, is DOT giving the incoming traffic load with the increase expected in more homes that are going to be in the coming in the area over the next few years? Um, are you giving any uh, consideration to all that new traffic load that's going to come in when you're designing this roundabout um so i, I can i can take that one okay. let me take that one todd sure go ahead um yeah and i i saw i saw that question pop up and and hopefully we we somewhat address that um in in the presentation the the, the short answer is yes um when this project initially started that was Free some of this development coming in. So we actually did go back and update um, the traffic projections for um, the, the residential development. Um, and related to that, I see as it, as it um, in, in the next part of that question, um, the, traffic, the traffic analysis assumes um, the new development and the, um, and the extension of Beresford Road in, in coordination with the county. Okay, another question. Do we uh, know the timetable yet for the beginning of the construction and or the actual opening of this roundabout? So, so the project's not currently funded for construction. Um, uh, so we can't really set a timetable for the construction until we receive that funding. Um, but as soon as we do, we'll be able to establish that timeline. Um, but it's not currently within the department's five-year work program, um, but that's subject to change. Okay, we have um, one person's asking about traffic and people trying to leave their driveways. They say that uh, the gridlock that we have now makes it uh, a little more difficult to get out of their driveways during the rush hour traffic. And with the uh, roundabout, they believe that um, that's gonna make it almost impossible for them to get out. Do you have any considerations that are being made for uh, this type of scenario? Nick, do you wanna talk about you want me to take the, that one? Turn, the shared left turn? Okay. Sure. 
Sure. Yeah. So, so one one feature, I guess, it, it is I understand the concern of you know you would pull out, um, assuming that you know you have a red light in one direction and it gives you that opportunity. Um, the nice thing about the roundabout is that you it is in of itself um, controlling speed and slowing speed. So the opportunities for gaps um, even outside of the intersection increase. But um, really, particularly for the um, uh, for State Road 44 east of Kepler Road, um, we do have a, we are widening to create a three lane section, which will provide, uh, you know, two, th you know, two through lanes, two travel lanes, as well as a um, two way left turn lane, which um, obviously helps pulling in two driveways, but can certainly help um, to, to pull out of the driveway as well to provide that refuge um, to, uh, to then merge in with, with uh, the adjacent traffic. We want to pull up the um, exhibit. I think I think you had a a rendering that might show it. Yeah. Uh, why Why don't you that one? Let me. If you turn it over to me, I can probably share something more clear. Nick, I just gave you control. Okay. See that, but which screen am I now? Which screen can you see? We are seeing all your files on your desktop. Your desktop looks like mine. Okay, well, let's not do that. While you're doing that, um, um, we do want to remind everyone that the materials that we're sharing tonight, including the video of the presentation, will be available on our CFL Roads webpage. Again, that address is www.cflroads.com and you type in the project number 431922-1. Here you go, Nick. Can you can you see that better now? Yes. Okay. So this one doesn't extend all the way to Talisman Lane, but to, to make that point, um, this is the the uh, the the three lane section. So for example, these driveways Coming into these driveways, there's a left, and there's also the opportunity to pull out and be in, you know, have a refuge to not have to make that entire movement if if there are gaps in in you know one or um, you know one or both directions. Uh, I have another question. Um, we are asking about how the roundabout accommodates larger trucks using this intersection. Yep. So that that is a um, a, a common concern and also a you know a, a common myth that that trucks cannot be accommodated um, if properly designed. A, a truck navigating through the roundabout is is perfectly fine. Um, what we do uh, for trucks specifically as it relates to design, you can see it in, um, even if I zoom in a little bit, what, what you do for, to accommodate a large truck that needs to navigate through, one, you provide this gore area. And what that gore area does is as a truck comes through here, it utilizes this extra pavement width to avoid over tracking, you know, this island. Um, in this lane, the, the gore is used so that your truck doesn't encroach into the adjacent lane. Uh, the other um, important factor for navigating, for trucks navigating, is that this, this pink um, here is actually a truck apron. So it is a mountable curb, and as trucks come through and make their turn, they can actually, their, their truck trailer traverses uh, this apron um, to make that maneuver without you know, encroaching into into anything else. Um, the uh, the design, you know, as far from an F dot perspective on roundabouts on state roadways, um, roundabouts need to be designed to accommodate uh, side by side truck as well as passenger vehicle traffic within the roundabout. So that has to do with providing the appropriate um, pavement width throughout. Um, and the other aspect is you you check um, you check each approach to make sure that uh, trucks can navigate the roundabout without um, over-tracking on top of the curb.
All right, you guys spoke about a refuge earlier. Can you explain what that is? A refuge, um, potentially, I, I think that's again going back to um, the comment regarding the, the left, the providing the two-way left turn lane. Um, what this does is, you know, for example, if a, if a vehicle was pulling out um, trying to make a left from from this driveway, they wouldn't necessarily have to cross all the lanes of traffic to make that movement. If they had a gap heading this way, they could pull out and and be in this area um, in the, within the, the, the two-way left turn lane and then make a merge movement. So I, I think that was what was meant by, by a refuge area. Okay. Uh, what about the traffic pattern for people to get in and out of those businesses? Is it going to be one way in, one way out, or does it go both ways? Does it really affect the businesses' entrances and exits? Yep. So that was that. Um, that has been coordinated with the um, with the developers um, and the departments. So basically, you can, as you can see in this map, the businesses all have two access points, one on Kepler Road and one on 44, to make those, uh, to make your right in, right out movement. Um, the other nice thing about a roundabout is um, you also have, uh, you know, the ability to make a U-turn built in by just using the left turn lane and making, making the movement around the roundabout and out. So um, access to those, um, to those businesses should not be an issue. Okay. Just as a quick reminder also, um, we will be responding to the questions that we have received um, using the email address that was associated with the question. Um, if you would prefer to receive that response um, by U.S. mail, we do ask that you um, provide that um, address to us um, as we have your email addresses, but not necessarily a mailing address. Uh, I have another question here. Are you planning on using any dark skylighting at the intersection to prevent light pollution? So. Uh, first and foremost, what we're mainly concerned about is providing the proper illumination for both the vehicular traffic as well as the pedestrians. Um, from a department standpoint, it's typically, when you talk about dark sky, it's typically for, um, you know, wildlife sensitive areas. So there currently isn't any special provision to provide, to provide that um, for this particular project. Um, but that's something that certainly can be considered. And you all, within the design, you, you do you do look at you know providing the most efficient lighting that does not um, adversely impact the surrounding area. Okay. Um, what kind of education is planned to let the community know how to use a two-lane roundabout? We don't see a whole lot of these in the area, and some of us aren't that familiar with them. So how are we going to get out the word to let people know um, how these roundabouts actually work? So I know that um, the department has put together a, a number of resources um, just for that purpose. Um, I believe, I'm not exactly sure of the date, and we can find out, but um, We've started doing a roundabout week um, where we try to get all this information out to as many people as we can. Um, and then as far as with this project, as we mentioned before, we will have another pro uh, public hearing. Um, so we'll be bringing this information back to the public again. It'll be uh, a little farther along in design. So um, we'll have a little more detail than we do even now. Um, but but yes, the department is definitely focused on on educating the public on these. And I think Todd, you said during the public hearing, um, hopefully we will be able to meet in person again at that point, um, and we will have 
some more hands-on activities planned that we just were not able to do in the virtual realm this time. We have some questions about um, acquisition of land. How much land can people in that area, should they expect uh, some of the land to be used, some of their private land? Uh, do we know about that? So um, we're still kind of early in design. We are um, working on working on developing the uh the right-of-way requirements now um and and as that moves along um those properties that would be impacted uh would be um somebody from the department's right-of-way group would be reaching out to those pro uh, property owners along with myself um to, to make you aware um, we do know that we're going to have right-of-way impacts with this project it's just the extent of which it's um it's still subject to change. Okay, and Todd, did you say that, um, is this project on the next five year schedule to begin? What was the timeline again that you said? I said we don't really have a timeline um, because we're waiting for the project uh, to receive construction funding. So once, that funding um, is put in place, we'll be able to develop a timeline for the construction start. Do we know of any additional roundabouts that are planned, uh, either by the county or anywhere in the area, or is this the only one we're focusing on right now? So this is the only one um, that uh, in this area that FDOT is working on. Um, the, the county has a project at uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard and Orange Camp Road. Um, and I'm sure we can uh, reach out to the county and get the status of their project um, to anybody who would like it. Hey, we're asked, uh, we have a question about um, if you know of anywhere else in Florida where, that has this type of roundabout, uh, where it's been implemented and, and what's been the general feedback on it? Nick, have you seen any information on similar roundabouts? Um, yeah, well, I would have to go back and, and look. Um, for for specific locations um, within Florida that that it's used, I know that you know this isn't the first two lane roundabout um, in the state, but as far as specific locations, we'll have to we'll have to verify that and get back with you. Okay, so we'll look into that a little deeper and and provide a, a written response. We do thank everyone who's okay. We do yeah, thank everyone who has submitted questions so far. Um, thanks, Sherry, very much for reading those. Um, we do have a few more minutes if you want to ask us some more questions. Also, as a reminder, um, we are going to represent the presentation um, or repeat it at 6:30. So if um, you missed part of it or, or want to stick around, you're welcome to. Um, if we have addressed your questions and, and you've seen the presentation. Um, it will just be a repeat of what we had done before. So um, obviously we'll stick around. If any more questions come in, we'll, we'll try to answer them. One more question. Uh, do we have an estimate of when we believe the funding will be in place for this roundabout? Um, I'm not aware of one. I know that, um, you know, it's it's on the um, the transportation planning organization's priority list. Um, and so we hope we hope that it gets funded 
soon, but um, right now we just we just really don't know. Another question we have is um, talking about the congestion on Kepler Road and if this is going to affect that congestion with how the uh, data that we've shown was from 2017 and it's obviously increased uh, since then. So with all the backups they have now, how is it going to affect the uh, congestion on northbound Kepler Road? Can you repeat that one, Sherry? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. It's OK. Um, the question is talking about how our numbers were from the backups that work um, we saw in 2017, which was the latest numbers that we had. Um, and they're saying that, you know, as we know, things are much worse today with the traffic congestion. Um, and that traffic on 44 has been backed up and then congestion on Kepler. Uh, so they're just wondering, um, what is the plan for Kepler Road? Uh, how is this expected to help reduce that congestion? Um, okay, well, I, I can speak about one part of that. I mean, the, the, the so this intersection, as, as I'm sure you all know, driving through that it is is one bottleneck within this network um, so the goal is to you know correct that problem with the roundabout um, as far as up and downstream um, that becomes you know a, a bigger issue as far as improvement to Kepler Road um, there is in the long-range transportation plan um, Kepler Road is identified to be widened to a four-lane facility. I don't believe that's currently, uh, I don't believe that's currently funded, and that looks like it's in the outer years of um, of the 2040 plan, from what I understand. Um, State Road 44 is a fairly constrained facility, and I don't believe uh, there, there's um, plans to um, widen that to uh, a four-lane roadway. Um, but as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, the county is looking to move forward with the uh, Bearsford Road extension to the south of, of 44, um, which should uh, help alleviate some of that traffic on 44. Yeah, and I just say again, I think we can, um, you know, we can reach out to the county to get a little more detail um, related to any future plans they have for um, Kepler Road. Could you show us where the bike lanes are in this, this slide that we have up right now? Yeah, um, so as far as bike lanes, now the, um, the bike lanes themselves will essentially match the existing condition. So they use the paved shoulders. Um, so it's a little hard to see on this graphic, but there are paved shoulders outside the travel lane that are utilized. Once you get within the um, influence of the intersection, that shoulder tapers down, and that is where the cyclist has the choice to either um, merge in with the vehicular traffic and make their movement, or take this bike ramp and exit the roundabout and then utilize the wide, widened sidewalk to make crossing movements around the roundabout. So uh, we do not extend bicycle lanes through a roundabout, because that presents a safety concern, particularly if a um, cyclist got into the roundabout in a perspective lane and then tried to follow it all the way around, it would conflict with the vehicular traffic. So um, bike lanes do not go through the roundabout, but um, the accommodation certainly is, is provided.
Thanks, Nick. And um, we also just want to remind everyone um, that we will respond to all of the comments that have been received in writing, um, comments and questions. So in addition to addressing the questions that we can this evening, we will respond to everyone in writing. I have a question about landscaping. Are the islands going to be grassed? And if so, is landscaping going to be part of this project? Uh, yes, landscaping will be part of the project, um, at least for the center island. Um, if there is any other um, landscaping you know, identified um, outside or uh, within the median islands in here that is something we uh, would require further discussion with the county uh, the reason why um, the center island is landscaped is not only for aesthetics but it's also uh, 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 from a safety perspective so you actually it's somewhat counterintuitive but you do not want a vehicle to actually be able to see straight through a roundabout because that's going to require them to slow down and look to their left as they're approaching. So if you can see straight through, um, drivers oftentimes perceive that they have a clear way. The roundabout gets um, uh, mounded up from from the truck apron, and then you have um, you know lower shrubs and then some taller um, uh, trees in the middle. Okay, and how far does the three lane on State Road 44 extend to the east? So at so um, Ellison Lane is the last intersection that it that is um, the the two way left turn lane is provided, and then it uh, tapers down uh, from that intersection. Yeah, it tapers down just before Lake Winnemucet. Is that right? Again, we thank you for joining us for the presentation. Um, we will be repeating the presentation in about seven minutes or so. Um, if you do have any additional questions or comments, we encourage you to go ahead and en enter those now. Nick, I'm going to go ahead and, and take the screen back from you um, so that we can get ready to repeat our right ahead. presentation. Okay. Again, just a quick reminder too that this the recording of this um, webinar, as well as all the materials, will be posted onto our CFLRoads.com website um, within a few days. And we do encourage you to keep checking back with us, um, get in contact with Todd or Nick, um, or go through our CFL Roads Ask a Question button um, so that we can keep you up to date. And again, when you exit the webinar, there is a short survey. We do encourage you to take a couple minutes, um, it's three questions, to complete that as well. So we will get started with the other presentation in just a few minutes, or a repeat in just a few minutes.
Okay, I think we can get started um, on repeating the presentation. I'd like to turn it over to um, Susan now. Welcome to the virtual public meeting for the design of a new roundabout at the intersection of State Road 44 and Kepler Road. The purpose of this meeting is to introduce the design concepts to the community and to provide an opportunity for questions and comments. We will also go over the project schedule. A public hearing for this project will be held at a later date. This meeting is being held in accordance with state and federal regulations, including Title VI of the Civil Rights Act. Public participation is encouraged and solicited without regard to race, color, religion, sex, age, national origin, disability, or family status. Persons wishing to express their concerns relative to the Florida Department of Transportation compliance with Title VI may do so by contacting Jennifer Smith. She is the FDOT District 5 Title VI Coordinator by email at jennifer.smith2 at dot.state.fl.us or Jacqueline Paramore, FDOT's Statewide Title VI Coordinator by email at jacqueline.paramore at dot dot state dot fl dot us now i'd like to turn it over to nick harrison our consultant project manager thank you susan uh, this project is located in volusia county adjacent to the city of deland the project includes replacing the existing traffic signal with a new roundabout at the intersection of State Road 44 and Kepler Road and roadway widening to create a three-lane section to accommodate left-turning vehicles along State Road 44 east of Kepler Road. The project limits begin west of Kepler Road and extend east past Hallison Lane. The existing intersection consists of one travel lane in each direction with right and left turn lanes along both State Road 44 and Kepler Road. There are no sidewalks and bicyclists use paved shoulders and bicycle through lanes at the intersection. There is also new development proposed in three out of the four quadrants of the intersection, including a new gas station to replace the existing Circle K, a 7-Eleven gas station, and an animal hospital. These are proposed to be in place prior to construction of the intersection improvements. This intersection experiences a high volume of injury-related crashes and significant traffic backups in the AM and PM peak hours. From the study period between 2011 to 2015, there were 81 total crashes with 33 or 41% resulting in injuries. This includes 22 angle or left turn crashes. Based on traffic volumes from 2017, intersection approach delays range from 48 seconds in the AM peak hour to 141 seconds in the PM peak. This means traffic backups can extend a quarter of a mile from the, this intersection. The goal of this project is to enhance safety and improve operations at the intersection. These problems will only get worse as traffic volumes continue to increase in this corridor. This map shows the adjacent plan development noted earlier, as well as substantial new residential development proposed in the area. The traffic projections for this project have been updated to account for this future plan development. The roundabout was selected for this intersection to improve safety first and foremost. Between 2014 and 2018, there were 62 angle or T-bone crashes resulting in at least one fatality at intersections in Volusia County. Roundabouts are a proven countermeasure to reduce these most serious types of accidents at intersections. Roundabouts are not a magic pill to eliminate all accidents, but due to reduced speeds and traffic patterns of this intersection type, crashes are typically limited to minor fender bender, rear end, or side swipe crash types that do not result in serious injury or fatality. From the same period, there were no fatalities at Volusia County intersections from side swipe crashes. 
At this intersection, it is estimated that the chance of serious in injury or fatal crashes is reduced by 70% compared to the existing signal. The primary reason for this reduction of serious accidents at the intersection is due to a reduced amount of conflict points or interaction between vehicles. At our traditional signalized intersection as shown on the left-hand side, white circles identify locations where vehicular paths can cross one another, which can lead to potentially dangerous angle-type crashes. Conversely, for the roundabout shown to the right, the opportunities for vehicles to cross paths at high speeds have been eliminated and replaced with merging conflict points which limit the severity of a potential crash if one were to occur. As traffic backups are a common occurrence at this intersection today, the roundabout will also significantly reduce congestion. The proposed roundabout will reduce traffic delays by approximately 52% in the PM rush hour and 80% in the AM in the design year of 2040. The department analyzed a variety of options to enhance safety and relieve congestion at this intersection. The alternatives that best improve traffic operations in the 2040 design year included a traffic signal with two through lanes in all directions and two southbound left turn lanes as shown on the left, and a two lane roundabout with right turn bypass lanes as shown on the right. Comparing these two alternatives, the roundabout was selected based on the safety enhancements, comparable reduction in traffic delays, less right-of-way impact, and the overall resulting cost benefit. This is what the proposed roundabout will look like once constructed, looking from northeast to southwest. In addition to the roundabout, improvements include pedestrian and bicycle facilities, landscaping in the center island, and lighting for vehicular traffic as well as pedestrians. Now we'll take a look at the roundabout in action. Starting from the north of the intersection looking south, this video shows the proposed roundabout as well as the adjacent future development, including the redeveloped Circle K in the foreground, the new 7-Eleven to the near right, and the new animal hospital in the far right of, across the intersection. The traffic that you see is the actual forecasted traffic volume during the PM rush hour in the 2040 design year. Looking past the intersection to the east along 44, note the roadway widening for the left turn uh, that extends to Talisman Lane. Each entry approach to the roundabout consists of two lanes in each direction with right turn bypass lanes in three out of the four quadrants. As vehicles approach the roundabout, note how they slow down and yield to oncoming traffic and then proceed when traffic is clear. Additionally, there are sidewalks and crosswalks at all approaches. Pedestrians will activate the rep Rapid Rectangular Flashing Beacon, or RRB, prior to crossing. There are also bicycle ramps at each approach to allow cyclists to exit the roadway and utilize the sidewalk if they so choose. To safely navigate the roundabout, it is important to follow the signing and payment markings. Once a driver is in the correct lane, they should not change lanes within the roundabout. To continue straight through, drivers may use either of the two lanes, yield to pedestrians in oncoming traffic, and proceed, as shown here. Left tur turn maneuvers can only be made from the inside lane. Drivers will perform the same yield operation and then proceed past the oncoming lanes and follow the circle to make the left turn, as shown here. Right turn movements for the State Road 44 and northbound Kepler Road approaches will use right turn bypass lanes. This traffic does not enter the roundabout, but still must yield to oncoming traffic. Bicyclists have two options to navigate the roundabout. The first option is to exit the roadway via the bicycle ramp and use the sidewalks and crosswalks to complete their maneuver. The second option is to remain within the roadway and traverse the roundabout in the same fashion as, the motor, ve as motor vehicle traffic.
To safely cross the roundabout, pedestrians should use the sidewalk and marked crosswalks and never enter the center of the roundabout. As mentioned earlier, to alert drivers that a pedestrian is present, pedestrians will activate a, re a rectangular rapid flashing beacon, or RRB, in a similar fashion to a, tr a traditional signalized intersection. Pedestrians should wait and allow for vehicles in both approaches, in both approach lanes, to yield prior to crossing the street. And with that, I will turn it back over to Susan. Thanks, Nick. You can find more information online about roundabouts and how to use them at www.fdot.gov and www safety.fhwa.gov. Tips are also available by typing fdot.tips forward slash roundabout in your browser. We are still early in the design process for this project. Initial plans will be submitted this summer. A public hearing is scheduled for early 2021 with final plans submitted in the summer of 2021. Right of way is needed for this project and a portion of the estimated $6 million cost is funded. Construction is expected to cost 4 million and is not currently funded. Your feedback is important to us and we encourage you to share your comments using any of the following methods. One, type a question in the question box during the virtual meeting. That's the meeting that we're in now and the box that you have to your right. Two. Download a comment form from the handout section of the page during the virtual meeting and return it to the address shown on the form. Three, you can contact the FDOT project manager, Mr. Todd Helton, by email at todd.helton at dot.state.fl.us or by telephone at 386-943-5207. Use the Ask a Question button on the project page of our CFL Roads website at www.cflroads.com forward slash 431922-1. Comments are welcome throughout the project. Those received by August 21st, 2020 will become part of the record for this meeting. To follow the status of the project, please visit the project page on the FDOT Central Florida website, www.cflroads.com. Type the project number 431-922-1 in the search box at the top of the page. Then click Go, and when new page opens, click the project file name. A recording of this presentation will be posted to the website within a few days. Again, if you have questions or you would like more information, please contact Todd Helton, FDOT Project Manager, or Nick Harrison, Consultant Project Manager. Thank you for your interest in this project. We will now begin a question and answer period. All right, thanks, Susan. Um, not sure if we have any uh, new questions or not. Um, if you do have a question, please go ahead and type it in the uh, comment box now. Just one, um, does the FDOT plan to do any more of these types of roundabouts in the future? Um, so I think we've got a number of, of roundabout projects going on. Um, around the district and in here in Volusia County. Um, uh, I'd have to look into it a little more to find out exactly which projects are, are underway, what intersections. Um, I, I know that there's a, um, a couple in Northern Volusia County, but um, let us look into that and, and get you a better answer.
We'll just give a couple more minutes to see if anyone else has a question that comes up. Again, we do thank you for taking time to attend this virtual meeting. Um, we will be posting all of the information onto our CFL Roads website, including a recording of this presentation, um, as well as a PDF of the presentation and, and some of the exhibits that were used. Um, we do encourage at any time, if you have questions or comments, please don't hesitate to reach out to anyone on the project team. So we'll just leave it open for just a couple more minutes to see if we get any, no any other questions. We have a request to show the actual map again of the uh, roundabout and how much of the land around it is expected to be used. Nick, I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you then. Can you see it? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, in regards to how much of the land is going to be used, um, not entirely sure how, how to how, how to describe it, but in general terms, without seeing the existing roadway underneath, it's a little bit difficult. But um, the roundabout is uh, is uh, pretty much centered, or perhaps maybe even just slightly offset from the existing intersection. So it is quite a bit wider, um, but the uh, I guess the advan one of the advantages of having um, uh, and uh, anticipated development or proposed development in the area is that this was all coordinated um, the developments of these properties were coordinated with um, these developers and the roundabout so there won't be any further impact to um, those properties um, once this roundabout is constructed because those will be in place first Um, we have a question about the length of construction time and when you think that start date will be. So um, as far as the start date goes, um, so this project's not currently funded for construction. Um, you know, as soon as that funding becomes available, we'll be able to establish a, a timeline for construction. Um, a start date. We're still a little early on in design to, to, to be able to tell you how long it would take, but uh, Nick, do you have like a rough estimate um, on the construction time for that? It's probably um, because it's constructed under traffic, it, it, I would estimate it's a 12 to 18 month project. Uh, this is Carolyn. Because we do have a right of way phase, how how long does that right of way phase typically, once the plans are far enough along that we know what those right of way needs would be, how long would that phase be? Um, typically, that phase is about two years. Um, we'll be at the point um, of kind of final design, submitting things to to right of way around this time next year so you know theoretically um so right of way would would begin you know fall of next year right of way acquisition phase somewhere in there so um you know roughly three mm -hmm. years from now we would be through our right of way phase and we would need to complete the right of way phase before we could even let for construction is that correct Right. So the earliest construction would start would be late 23, 24, if it were to get funded in that time period. Sure. Can you explain where the project starts and ends again? Uh, 
Um, yeah, so it's not best shown on, on this particular map. Um, project begins just west of of Kepler Road, and the 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 only thing controlling that over here is just widening from the existing two lane section to create the additional lanes that are heading into the roundabout. Um, heading east, it is it it basically is just east of Talisman Lane. So this two way left turn lane um, runs the extent of State Road 44 up to Talisman Lane and then tapers down essentially at the beginning of um, the beginning of, of the curve um, the, of, of 44 that, that, that turns south. Will any of these improvements modify any of the existing driveways that are there right now? Um, the, the answer is, is yes. Um, the impact to the, at least from the current concept, the impacts to most of them on the north side will will be minimal, as uh, the the current concept is is widening to the south. Um, but the the drive, but most of the driveways are impacted in some fashion, even with the you know the the resurfacing of the roadway. So that in addition to widening, the whole entire roadway will be resurfaced. And um, the driveway approaches within uh, the existing right of way um, will will be um, will be improved is, is from a from a resurfacing standpoint. And has all the property for this roundabout been acquired for this project yet? No, it has not. Uh, when construction does start, will the road be closed during construction, or will, the, will there always be a way for people to get down that road? So the road will be open um, throughout. So there are, um, unfortunately, just based on where this intersection sits in the roadway network, there's really not any, um, you know, great opportunity to to shut down. Um, either one of these roads and detour traffic. Um, and obviously doing that, you know, um, would, would cause, certainly cause concerns with diverting traffic through um, residential neighborhoods. Um, you know, you know, there's, there's already an issue with that as far as uh, related to the traffic backup. So it will be both Kepler and 44 uh, will be open during construction which unfortunately makes it a little more complicated and, and likely longer uh, duration as opposed to being able to shut it down, but it's, it's, the, you know, it's the best approach. Um, State Road 44, you know, in addition to being a, you know, a critical network from a commuter standpoint is also a hurricane evacuation route. What about bicyclists? Will they need to walk their bikes? Uh, around this roundabout? Or is it more of a, are, would uh, they we'll, still be able to ride them? Yeah, so so what we've done to accommodate, help accommodate that, and you, kind of, you can kind of see it reflected here. So these sidewalks, for example, are your standard, um, are your standard uh, six foot sidewalks and they've been widened to eight feet to accommodate both cyclists and pedestrian traffic between the areas where you have the bike ramps. Um, I mean, as far as requiring them to walk, you know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know that they would would have to, um, but you know, it, it would likely be advisable for a cyclist to to walk um, on the sidewalk, particularly when they're you know, making a, u utilizing the crosswalk in the same fashion as a pedestrian, but um, I'd have to, I'd have to verify what the legality of that would be. But um, other than that, I don't think there's anything either way that, 
forces them to do that. And like I said, we've accommodated um, the opportunity for both cyclists and pedestrians to utilize the walk. Okay, we'll leave this open um, for about one more minute, see if anyone else has any questions that they would like to submit um, right now. Um, again, we there are other ways for you to submit your comments to us. Um, you can download that comment form from the handout section, um, call Todd um, or Nick or send an email um, or go to our website. Um, and again, we will be responding to all of the comments in writing. Um, to the email addresses associated with the comments that were submitted. Thanks everyone for joining us tonight. We just got one more in. Um, do you have any information on is it Barrett, Barrettsford? Barrettsford be, Avenue? Yeah, if it would be done uh, by the time we're starting the construction on this. Um, so I know that, that the um, city and the county are coordinating on this now. Um, I, I don't have a timeline for when that uh, project would be complete. Uh, but we've had conversations with them and, and I know that they're working towards that. Um, I, I can reach back out to them and kind of see where they're at to provide a response. Okay, well, thank you so much, everybody, for participating in our virtual public meeting. Um, be on the lookout for the notification for the public hearing that will be um, probably in early 2021. Um, we will reach out again. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening and a safe evening. I know there's some storms blowing through into land right now, so everybody stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.